Spartans! What is your profession? <laughs> Moving on to aircraft, we start with the Sukhoi Su-17. This was a variable sweep wing fighter bomber that was used by the Soviets and is even used today in some interesting capacities. It was the first variable sweep wing aircraft which actually entered Soviet service and is also known as the Fitter. Um, this machine would be, I suppose, an extension of the Su-7 family. If you didn't know about the Su-17, it was actually at least based off a, a demonstrator which came out of the Su-7. There was the Su-7-1G and this was just a demonstration just to show that the variable wing geometry uh, could actually work on a machine. And the Su-17 in itself, it had a limited production run and basically it had a longer fuselage of a two-seat Su-7U trainer and it had a bulged dorsal spine for extra fuel and then it retained the Su-7's engines, which of course we already have in game. This was manufactured in the late 60s to early 70s and obviously being a Soviet aircraft which has been used for many years, it is still technically in service today. It is used as a chaser aircraft which is actually pretty cool and it's also used by a ton of different countries today as well. Uh, this machine being a ground striker um, and in uh, general use, it does have a lot of armament options. It starts off with two 30 millimeter auto cannons. It can also have uh, gun pods in the form of 23 millimeters. It can carry air to airs, K-13s, R-60s, even R-73s, with obviously the air to surface missiles being the KH-23s, the 25s and the 29s, and it even can carry some anti-radiation missiles as well, on top of bombs of all different configurations and rockets. This would definitely come after the Su-7, and since we've had a great extension of that line uh, in recent times, I think this one does make sense uh, to be maybe one of the first variable uh, wing fighters uh, well, fighter bombers or variable wing aircraft that we would have in the game. Also, in the last Q&A, they did talk about the fact that there will be some of these aircraft at some point, not specifically the Su-17, but some kind of vehicle like it. The next one is the IAR-93. Now, this one is definitely going to come at some point anyway, but we just don't know when. You may ask, how do we know this? Well, there's a guy on War Thunder Live. He's called Nova29R. I'll leave a link to his page in the description. And this is a model maker. Uh, he makes full, um, you know, HD models for the game and has also made various projects in the past which have got into War Thunder. The, he's made a ton of different stuff uh, which has been uh, at least accepted into the game. One of the most recent ones was an event vehicle in the AR or the Arado 196. He's also made stuff like the Scimitar and many other vehicles as well. And at least, in my opinion, uh, looking at some of the new stuff he's working on, including the IAR-93B, uh, we may be seeing this soon. He's also working on what I believe is the HF-24, uh, which would be a pretty cool machine. But what is the IR-93? Well, it actually has a pretty uh, decent link to the Soko J-22 Oreo, which we covered uh, the other day for the Yugoslav tech tree. This is a subsonic close support ground attack and tactical reconnaissance aircraft. It is designed as well uh, with a second capability as a low level interceptor, so very similar to a lot of those Yugoslavian aircraft, which we saw very much a air-to-ground um, machine designed as a strike bomber or strike fighter, depending on what combat it goes into. The IR-93B, which is the special 
specific variants being made by Nova actually has some upgraded engines over the standard ones. It has some afterburning Viper Mark 63347 engines, has a bit more fuel on board, and also upgraded hardpoints, so it can carry some pretty crazy uh, loads. So this thing still, you know, isn't uh, at the point where it is Mach 1 capable. It can get up to 0.9, and when you have a look at its armament, that is where the scary stuff comes in. So it's armed with two 23mm uh, GSH 23s, so nothing really crazy, but the hardpoints themselves, there's five of them, and they can carry up to 2,500 kilos worth of ordnance. LPR 122s and 57s and PRN 80s, then it can also carry K13s and also R60s, which we already have in the game. KH 23s as well, the Grom, and also the AGM-65, the Maverick, which I'm sure a lot of people have been looking forward to, mainly because everybody associates it with the A-10. It can also carry a bunch of different bombs and also a bunch of radio equipment and IFFs and all of this wonderful stuff. Basically, this would be another ground pounder, which would be pretty fun to play in a multi-role way, especially in something like Ground Realistic, very similar to the SU-17. The only issue is this machine is not really part of a nation which exists right now in the game. It's a Romanian machine. Now, understand, we do have Romanian machines in the game. They find themselves in the German and the Italian tech tree. And also in the past, when it comes to Italian stuff, um, it has been said that Italy may become a nation which adds all of these other countries in it just to bolster it and also create more of a, you know, sorted out tech tree. So the IR-93 could easily come into the Romanian tech tree. It could also maybe even go into some others since it shares some of its uh, technology with a few other machines that are already in the game. The Voodoo also makes the list from McDonnell, the F-101. This was an American machine which basically took many, many variants and uh, was used or designed to used in many, many different ways. So depending on which F-101 we get, it could be a completely different story on uh, how, you know, it's actually incorporated into the game. This thing, obviously initially designed by McDonald Aircraft Corporation, was designed as a long-range bomber escort, but the problem was that they decided to change tact, so instead it was developed as a nuclear armed fighter bomber, which is a completely different role <laughs> compared to the first one. On top of this, the Voodoo was supersonic, and it was also used in other roles such as photo reconnaissance, and therefore this means that it was used, as I said, in many different ways. It was actually used by by different countries as well. There were American voodoos, Canadian voodoos, and even the uh, ROC uh, used some of them. So we could actually see this in the Chinese tech tree, uh, which would be kind of interesting. Now, depending on the variant that you look at, they do vary widely, widely, especially when it comes to the armaments that they have. The F-101A, the first um, F-101, or the initial, I suppose, production run, did have cannons. It had four 20mm M39s. Some of them were sometimes removed, depending on the missions that were around. And then as we go through the different variants, the B, the C, the H, obviously the reconnaissance variants, as I said, the armaments completely differ from each other. And on some of them, they don't have any guns, instead having to rely on missiles. So they would have to rely on stuff such as aim for Falcons, you know, which we talked about the other day when it came to the Canadian machine that was passed to the developers, or even stuff like Genie nuclear rockets. And as talked about before, this was supposed to be a supersonic machine, which would be able to tactically nuke areas as well. And being able to go Mach 1.72, it would have definitely been able to do that. This thing is so up in the air when it comes to which one uh, could could be added, and uh, whichever one is added would definitely shift some metas in the game. 
Another American aircraft also graces this list in the form of the F-105 Thunder Chief. This is an American purebred and would only be used by America. The Thunder Chief was a supersonic fighter bomber, which uh, basically found its success in the Vietnam War. It was also removed uh, from the Vietnam War uh, due to high loss rates when it came to its combat effectiveness. It was originally designed as a single-seat nuclear attack aircraft and also, just in general, when it comes to these American aircraft, had many different variants to try many different things to fit the battlefield at the time. On top of this as well, it was uh, a follow-on from the F-100 Super Sabre in the fact that it did did still uh, carry cannon armament, even though at the time it was believed that missiles would take over the battlefield, especially during the Vietnam War. So this thing was still armed with a 20mm Vulcan, uh, so it would still have that, and it had five total hardpoints, four on the underwings and one centerline pylon as well. It would be able to carry AIM-9s, AGM-12 bullpups that we already have in the game, and then also AGM-45 Shrikes, the anti-radiation missiles that we haven't seen yet. Then a bunch of different bombs as well. This thing could carry up to 14,000 pounds of ordnance, something which is completely insane. But then again, we have machines in the game which can already carry uh, nearly that, or even more than that, so I suppose it wouldn't be that crazy. The question is, can those machines also go Mach 2.1 at 35,000 feet? That is the question we must ask ourselves. This thing is powered by a Pratt & Whitney J75 P19W. It's an afterburning turbo jet engine with 64 kilonewtons of thrust, which is absolutely insane. Then, at the same time as well as all of this, it does have a lovely radar on it and is also a massive behemoth. This is a big machine which could easily fit in the game in many different variants depending on which ones are picked. For the naval portion of the leak, we have two very large ships, so hopefully the big ship community is happy. The first one is the USS Alaska. This is the lead ship of the Alaska class of large cruisers. This thing really is a large cruiser. It is uh, definitely more morphed between a heavy cruiser and a battleship. This machine was launched in 1943 and commissioned in 1944, meaning that this is very much a late Second World War vehicle. Vehicle, and putting it into the game now, especially when we only have First World War battleships, would be kind of hilarious, because it should absolutely donk on them. At the same time as well, when we have a look at the USS Alaska, one thing uh, also does stand out. When we had the new teaser for the battleships in uh, for Update New Power last year, there did also seem to be an Alaska there. Uh, so, at least in that sense, it is a little bit confirmed. It will be in interesting to see how it does against some of the other machines. The difference between this and some of the other battle, well, the battleships and the battlecruisers we have in the game is its secondaries, but its primary armaments are still pretty meaty. This thing has three sets of triple-mounted 305 millimeters plus 12 130 millimeter secondary guns, and then when it comes to its AA armament, 56 40 millimeter AA guns and 34 20 millimeter AA guns. You are not getting near this thing with a plane. It is kind of as simple as that. If you thought the Baltimore was scary when it came to the amount of AA a machine can get, you ain't seen nothing yet. When it comes to the belt armor, 229 millimeters with 325 millimeters on the turret as well. Even though this thing had a short life, uh, it was basically decommissioned in 1947, only after about about three years of service and stricken in 1960, it was still able to gain three battle stars during the Second World War. So this machine I can definitely see coming to the game at some point, whether it's now or whether it's later, we'll see it, well, sometime.
And one nation that is missing out on the dreadnought battleships that we already have in the game is the Italians. The Italians do not have their battleship yet, and at least in this list, they would be getting one. The Dante Alighieri, which is uh, basically a First World War battleship that the Italians used. It was completed in 1913 and put into commission in the same year, serving until 1928, and this machine would be very similar to some of the others that we already have in the game with four triple mounted 305 millimeter guns 12 single and four twin 120 millimeters with 13 single 76.2 millimeters and also some torpedo tubes on top of it the belt would be 254 millimeters with the gun turrets being 254 as well so very much armed to the teeth very much large guns and very much having a good time uh, when it comes to Italy. And overall, you know, Italy is missing their battleship. I can definitely see them getting one in the next updates, or at least maybe in a few updates time. Hopefully at some point they will get one, so they will join the likes of every other nation with having this top tier. The helicopter on top of everything is the YAH-64. This is a prototype version of the Apache, which of course we already have in the game in several variants, in the Japanese, British, and also American trees. The YAH-64 has already also been leaked. Uh, it was leaked a while ago, maybe even a year ago at this point, where I believe it was on either Xbox or PlayStation 4 stores. They were selling the Mangus the A129 for the Italians, and somebody screwed up and instead used the YAH-64 pitches, which is a bit of an issue. The distinct differences between the YAH-64 and the Apaches we already have is the T-shaped tail that it has in the back with the hor horizontal stabilizer attached to the top of the tail rotor pylon as well. So this thing uh, would definitely at least be slightly different. Obviously, it would come in the American tech tree, and I'm sure it would also have some crazy armaments. Maybe it might be an event vehicle. It would be kind of annoying having two American event vehicles for helicopters, especially since they're the only event vehicles for helicopters, but you never know. Uh, it may actually happen. The last two things uh, will also, um, you know, will include in this a little bit too, is APS on some existing tanks, so active protection systems. You know, we've talked about them in the past, maybe in the future we'll do a video which will be focused on uh, how those systems work because they are pretty interesting, and also variable sweep wings mechanics, which, you know, they've talked about in the Q&A, and also, well, the SU-17, which is already in this list. But anyway... I hope you enjoyed these two videos. Um, I had a lot of fun looking through the information, you know, trying to find out about these vehicles themselves. Luckily, most of them is pretty simple and also we've talked about before. So, yeah, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Teddy, John Ryman, Universe A, Conte Baraka, Trigger Hippie, Eugene's Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Hosest Cachot, Hans, Barine, and Samuel Schlick for supporting the channel.